Bonjour tout le monde, I'm Diane. Welcome back to We in France, where we talk about everyday French life and beyond from the point of view of an American who has lived in France since 2012. And as a blogger and YouTuber, one of the highlights for me is reading all of the emails I get from you guys. And every week I get a bunch of emails from readers um, and subscribers, maybe asking for advice, sharing a little bit of their story with me, writing with questions, just writing to say hi, and emails looking for support. And these emails looking for support come from people who have moved abroad and are maybe going through a really hard time. And to tell you the truth, this past pandemic year, I've gotten more emails than ever from people in that last category. Those of you looking for support because you're struggling and this video is for you. Okay, so let's talk about the dark side of living abroad as an expat or an immigrant and why it's not a one size fits all experience. So buckle up, I have a lot to say and there's not gonna be any fancy edits. I'm just gonna try to you know, blow through this and get it up for you because this is important, okay? And, and let me start by saying, if you're having a hard time out there, living abroad or not, know you aren't alone, please know that. And life in France hasn't been all sunshine and rainbows for me either, because you know what? Life in general isn't all sunshine and rainbows. And I'm not just speaking about the pandemic year, I just mean in general. And I hope this video is validating for you above all. And for those of you who romanticize life in France, I hope what we talk about here is a bit of a reality check and a reminder that no place is perfect. So to kick this off, let me start off by sending you a big virtual hug. This is your virtual hug to anyone who needs it right now. And I just wanna start by saying, I think mental health is a really important topic. And it's one that thankfully has moved into the forefront in a way, uh, especially given everything we've all collectively gone through this past year. And I wanna come right out of the gate here by saying that life abroad is not always easy. I can't say that enough. And living in France is not always in line with romanticized versions we so often see in TV shows like Emily in Paris. And to many of you, that might sound like a major duh, Diane. Of course it's not always easy and life in France isn't perfect, of course. But you'd be surprised at how many people I encounter, either online or in real life, who have their rose-colored glasses on really tight, unwilling to consider another perspective. So with that, I encourage you to continue listening with an open, empathetic mind. And I'm sure that someone in your life, maybe you, someone in your life is struggling in silence or at least has been in the past or will in the future and they'll need your support so let's hop in okay so what do those of us living abroad struggle with you might ask and it would be all the things we'd maybe encounter at home plus issues with learning a new language integrating and adapting in a new culture um, culture shock, making friends, uh, bureaucracy challenges, mental health, indecision, homesickness. We could go on and on, right? Even an identity crisis and just all kinds of other life stresses. And I'm sure that at least one of you out there watching this right now is thinking, well, you know, Diane, I'm sorry to hear that life isn't easy for everyone who chooses to live abroad and, you know, move to wonderful France, but I love France and I think it's great. And I would never have that kind of trouble. I would never have those problems. Or maybe someone's thinking, well, when I move to France next year, it's gonna be perfect because I know so many people and I've done the research and I'm not gonna struggle, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Or maybe even, oh, sucks for them, but I'd never struggle with mental health or have any trouble because I don't have mental health problems. And maybe the worst one, and this is one that I hear more often than not, if you have so many issues, well, go home. And <laughs> I laugh now, but you know, none of these reactions is helpful or kind. And the truth is if you move to France and you never encounter any type of struggle or doubt, you're either one, lying to yourself, or two, you haven't lived abroad long enough. Because my point here is that life abroad is real life. And in real life, we come up against struggle and hardship sometimes. That's how life goes, no matter where we live. And depression and anxiety don't discriminate based on age or gender or class or anything else. The way our body reacts to life is not a choice and is not always in our control. Now, if you've been part of the We in France community for any length of time, you'll know I try to paint an even picture of what life can be like for a foreigner in France. But I admit, the majority of my content shows La Belle France in a positive light. And that's intentional. Why? Well, there are two reasons for that. One is because the truth is that I love living in France and you know, I love living in the US too. There are pros and cons to life everywhere. The bottom line is that my life is good here and I enjoy sharing my travels with you. The behind the scenes videos, the cultural commentary, it lights me up inside. But 
I also keep it positive for number two because I know that's what people want. Strangers on the internet want to read and see. And no one wants to hear all about the less than perfect aspects about France, right? Or to hear about life abroad in general and how difficult it can be all the time. But let me point something out. There's a difference between being negative and being real about things and looking to people in your offline life for support. But here on YouTube, on my public life, and for my blog, I've always felt that by talking about the positive aspects of life in France only, I'd be doing my readers and subscribers a disservice. And I've written before about how living in France is completely different than vacationing in France, and living in France is real life and not a 24-7 vacation. And that's a point that is lost on a lot of people who only see France through the rose-colored glasses or have only passed through maybe on vacation. And that's fine, but the problem is, is when people get weird about it. And I've noticed on my blog and on other people's blogs and social media, when someone writes something critical about France, people get very defensive. And they almost seem to take any critique about France, no matter how valid, personally. As if they think of France as a human friend who we've just insulted, who they need to defend. It's the strangest thing, like France is on this pedestal, and if you have any hard times living here, that it must be your fault or that you're doing it wrong and that you don't deserve to be here and that somehow different experiences don't exist and that makes no rational sense. No one would actually choose to feel miserable all the time or choose to struggle and if you're experiencing anxiety or depression, it's not a choice. Or when foreigners in France do courageously speak up about depression or needing help or just not doing well, in the moment, people complain with, well, how bad can it be? You live in France. As if simply living in France is a cure-all for all of our problems. Or worse, well, if you don't like it that much, just go home or stop whining. Or you don't deserve to live abroad. As if it's a prize that we just fell into. And again, those are not the right answers at all. And they're certainly not helpful or empathetic to someone who's already down. And I see it play out time and time again on my social media networks. And it needs to stop. In other life situations, when people are having a hard time, are we so dismissive and are we so critical? Just imagine telling a new mother who is having a hard time, uh, you know, just adapting to life with a newborn that, oh, well, you're having a hard time. Well, maybe you never should have had the baby in the first place. No, no, we don't act that way. And, you know, if a new mom says she has no time for herself or that it's taking a toll on her well-being, could we even imagine saying, well, you chose to have that baby or you don't deserve to be a mother. You don't like it? Well, give your child up for adoption. No, that's insane. We'd offer, hopefully, a supportive ear. And before you say, well, that's different, I assure you it's not. Someone having a hard time, courageously speaking up about it, if they deserve anything, it's our support. And the rude responses are infuriatingly invalidating. It's exactly responses like these and people's unwillingness to try to listen and understand that keeps people from speaking up and it makes it harder for people having a hard time to actually get the help they need. And if you are struggling, please know there's nothing wrong with you. It's not your fault. It's this judgment from people who don't get it and probably aren't walking life in your shoes that keeps bloggers and YouTubers from sharing anything but the great aspects of life abroad. Or we just pretend that the shades of gray don't exist and that the hard times are just minor things and not worthy of discussion. Because again, that's not what people want to see. And it's so much harder to be authentic when people constantly jump down your throat. And then people watching think life abroad is all unicorn and rainbows. And then they're in for a rude awakening when they arrive. So over at Lace Lolos, Alexandra Guidelman, I probably butchered that, she writes, quote, There are so many articles selling expat life. What a wonderful, fulfilling experience it is. How you should embrace your host country's culture to truly appreciate it. Not enough prepare you for balancing a foot in one place while the other's back home. No one teaches you how to cope with the constant anxiety of something happening to a loved one 10,000 miles away. And she finishes by saying, you're certainly not prepared for sadness sneaking up on you, triggered by a FaceTime with your best friend showing off her latest mono pre-purchase, or simply the absence of daily phone calls. That one hurts too, unquote. And you know, I think it's really easy to focus on the positive sides of life abroad, and especially the first couple of years, that we almost feel guilty if things aren't always amazing, and then maybe we feel kind of shameful talking about it. And we feel even more guilty if we're dealing with anxiety or depression or just something in life that compounds that, and that something might be wrong with us if we're not loving it all the time, or 
When a life issue comes up, like a job loss, addiction, a health scare, a death, when that gets in the way of us being able to live life to the fullest. So I want to underline life can be hard anywhere. This is not a living abroad issue, but add in a new language, a culture, a job, a family, and things could get even worse. And I feel the dark side of life abroad then starts to rear its ugly head when everything compounds. Now, something else I want to bring up is this theme I've seen among my own readers actually, and elsewhere in this niche. And it's that life abroad is a certain way and that all of us living abroad belong to this homogenous group. Uh, you know, people with the same experiences, the same amount of money, the same ideas, the same socioeconomic backgrounds and education. And it's just not accurate. Not everyone's abroad because they want to be right. Remember that. And I've seen crazy comments and emails that express this underlying assumption that everyone who moves to any area of France is going to fall in love with the lifestyle, the food, the culture, the people, and that they're better off in France across the board. And along with that is the belief that if you move to France, everything that comes with it is inherently superior to life elsewhere, hands down across the board for everyone everywhere. And no, 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 that's not the case. And I see it expressed over and over again online in real life. And let me be the one to tell you, even if so many aspects of life in France are phenomenal, it's not a utopia where everyone and everything is perfect. People on the outside looking in make assumptions about what life abroad will be like. And I think sometimes people don't take the time to explore that experience for themselves or at least research it. And most of the people being judgmental and making these assumptions, they've never lived abroad and they just don't feel like that experience that you're talking about is lived up to what they built in their heads. You know, I find people can be critical of someone else's life. That's very different than the one they've lived um, and whatever they assume it to be. And it's certainly one thing to have a critical discussion that remains respectful and another thing entirely to act entitled and dismissive, uncaring, and even rude. And the point here is you can still love a place and enjoy yourself there and want to be there while still noticing the not so positive aspects of life and struggle. They're not mutually exclusive. No one abroad is doing any one thing more right or wrong than anyone else. People are just trying to live their life on their own terms and we're trying to do the best we can in the moment. And the best thing we could do for those who are struggling is offer support and understanding. And one last quote for you, Emmy over at surviving in Italy writes, what I'm not saying here is that you shouldn't live abroad because it's hard. I'm also not saying that living abroad is hard for everyone. Every situation is different. Ding, ding, ding. And sometimes getting away and moving to another country can be healing. My first two years in Italy, she says, were like a wonderful la la land fest and the best time of my life. And the subsequent three years were filled with stress, anxiety, and feeling more alone than I ever have in my entire life. What I'm saying is this, prepare for the struggle and get help when you need it. It's okay to ask for help, unquote. And I want you to truly hear that. It's okay to ask for help abroad or not. It's okay. We're all human. And it's not France that's to blame. It's just life. Being far away from what's comfortable can make life struggles really intensify and it can happen to anyone anywhere. And I choose positivity when I can, but I'm not immune to feeling down or getting into a funk and that's okay. We could talk about these things, right? So, with that, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to watch this video. It was an important one for me to make. And before anyone reads into this and thinks, oh, is that everything okay? Just know everything I talk about here is published well after I've had time to process it. So nothing happened recently or anything like that to trigger this video. It's just a topic uh, actually based on a blog post I wrote years ago and nothing triggered my thoughts here recently. So. I'm doing okay despite the year we've all had. I hope you are too. And I've had this on my mind lately as I email with people and it was an important topic for me to make a video about just so it would be validating for you. So as I mentioned, check out the resources below if you're having a hard time. I'm not affiliated with any of them. Um, and if something I've said here has shifted your perspective, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And as always, hit the subscribe button if you enjoy this type of everyday French life and beyond content and conversations like this. And um, yeah, check out my merch, check out my newsletter, my new ebook, all about lifestyle blogging for beginners. Lots of fun links. And um, thank you for being here. I'll see you back here on We in France soon. Salut.